Elena Spurgevichit was born in Kaunas, Lithuania on December 22, 1924, into a family of Lithuanian workers and was the oldest of three children. Now since infancy, the girl had been suffering from illness, which was spinal deformity, but was later cured by her mother's efforts. Now she began attending school at the age of seven and later joined the Scouts movement. After finishing her primary studies, Elena was enrolled at the Seoul Society Girls Gymnasium of Connors, directed by the Sisters of St. Casimir. She was intelligent in character, she listened carefully to the advice given to her, especially those relating to important matters. Now much of Elena's inner life is known thanks to her spiritual diary, which she wrote starting from October 12, 1940 until June 2, 1942, which reflected her day-to-day -day connection with God. Elena grew up a very religious girl, always attending Mass every morning before heading to school, and also always abstaining from consuming anything before receiving communion. Even when she attended school parties, she tried to keep a modest demeanor. I don't go hunting for acquaintances. I just want to dance and have fun. That's all. I have decided to be a good Catholic. But it is difficult. Without the support of the Lord, I am lost. I wish to be good, not to lead a hollow life. According to her sister Sabina, Elena was often ridiculed by her friends for her modesty, chastity, benevolence, and religiosity. She managed to pull through all of the criticism without changing who she had wanted to be. Now, the annexation of Lithuania to the Soviet Union in August of 1940 and the subsequent Nazi occupation in July of 1941 threw the population into a state of anxiety. In September of 1941, the Nazis ordered a mass execution of the Jews living in a ghetto in Kaunas. Elena recorded these events in a diary, but despite the desperation that surrounded her, she said something unusual about herself. In February of 1942, she stated, My heart is full of something. I rejoice that I understand happiness, but I'm seriously thinking that greater peace can be found in a convent. The name itself clearly speaks of solitude, silence, in peace. Lord, these are serious dreams. I want this with great certainty. I would like to leave everything. Oh, I hope the war ends soon. I would like to finish school and enter there, Father. Closer to you, the evening parties and dances to which I sometimes go, if considered more thoroughly, are real vanities, immodesties, these can only be avoided with you, Lord. As for daily life, Elena spent it reading and helping her mother with housework, rushing to wherever her help was required. Those who knew her declared that although she enjoyed having fun with her friends, she often talked about God, the church, and religious topics. Although many men were attracted to her, she never had a boyfriend, which most of the time worried her mother. Elena graduated in 1943 and wanted to study medicine at the Vytautas Magnus University, but the university was closed by the occupying German authorities. She then took courses in German and French hoping to become a teacher. According to those who knew her at the time, she was intelligent, vigilant, respectful of her elders and attentive to advice related to the noble task of life. It was in fall of 1943 that she received a teaching assignment in Geneva but decided to remain home due to the ongoing war. At about 10 p.m. on the 3rd of January, 1944, four men gained entry into Spurgevichut's home by claiming to be police officers. The Soviet partisans demanded to be given food and drank vodka that they brought. They pocketed any valuables and began harassing women for sex. Stacy Zuket, Spurgevichut's aunt and neighbor born in 1916, heard the noise and came to investigate. When she tried to run away to get help, she was shot and killed. The men then raped Spurgevichut's mother and threatened Spurgevichut to give in to their sexual advances. However, she steadfastly refused. Reportedly, her last words to her family were, Only I will die. You will live. After making the sign of the cross, she was shot under the right eye 
and since her right hand was grazed by the bullet, it is believed that she was crossing herself, defending her purity and dying a virgin martyr. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Defender of the little and the innocent, you gave your believer Elena the grace to resist the wicked plans of the attacker, helping her to choose an honorable martyrdom. Make us, who have to fight against various temptations and vices, be able to enjoy the recognition of the holiness of your servant in the church and receive her intercession and help. You live and reign forever. Servant of God, Elena's Sprogevichut, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.